Good morning, everyone. I hope that your day is off to a good start. Today we are looking at some lessons from Isaiah chapter 26. And we read the chapter yesterday and examined the things that are said within the chapter. We noted that it is a song of Isaiah. And before I delve into the, the lessons that I want to pull out from uh, this chapter today, I just want to make mention of the fact that as I've studied chapter 26, one of the interesting things about it is this particular song seems to give the sense of the righteous individual uh, praising God in the time of destruction or in the time of judgment. <coughs> it is the recognition that uh, God's judgment is going to come and that it is going to come on the unrighteous around them. It is going to come on the wicked around them. And yet they're not going to blame God or going to uh, go against God. Uh, and try to say that God doesn't have the right to do this, or that God shouldn't do this, or that God is not being just or righteous in doing this. But instead, they lift up and they praise God in the midst of this great turmoil. And so this is really, in many ways, a song of the righteous in facing these judgments that are coming down. There are a number of different ways that I thought about examining uh, things in chapter 26, but there was one thing that stuck out to me that is what I want us to hone in on for the next couple of minutes, and that is there are a number of statements that Isaiah makes in chapter 26 about the things that God does. <laughs> Uh, and he, he phrases them with the idea of you do this, you approach things in this way. And there's four of them here in chapter 26. And so that's what I want to hone in on in the lessons that w I've pulled out of chapter 26 today. The first one is found in verse number three, where there Isaiah says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. In other words, God promises to take care of those who keep their trust and their faith in him. And certainly when you're looking forward to the things that are going to transpire in the midst of the captivity and in the midst of the coming judgment that Isaiah has been talking about, you realize that God did exactly that. He took care of Daniel. He took care of Ezekiel. He took care of Jeremiah. He took care of those who were his servants. Now, was everything uh, exactly the way they might have desired or might have wished? No. And yet at the same time, he says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. When man's mind is focused on you, you will take care of him and you will give him peace in that particular endeavor. The second one that I wanted us to look at is in verse number seven, where there Isaiah says, the way of the just is uprightness. O most upright, you weigh the path of, your ju of the just. Yes, in the way of your judgments, O Lord, we have waited for you. You have the statement in verse seven that God weighs the path of the just. God pays attention to the direction of the just, and, and the way of God's judgments is righteous. In other words, God is going to pay attention to, and God is going to acknowledge the righteousness of the just individual that is willing to do his will. God is not going to forget about the righteous and lump him in with the wicked. Oftentimes, it seems as though when things are falling apart, that God has forgotten about the righteous individual in all of this, and yet that couldn't be further from the truth. Not only is God righteous and just himself, but he recognize, recognizes the individual who is just, uh, who is seeking to serve him in all that he does. The third thing that I want us to notice from this chapter is in verse number 12 where there he says, Lord, you will establish peace for us, for you have also done all our works in us. O Lord, our God, masters besides you have had dominion over us, but by you only we make mention of your name. 
Here is the recognition of the righteous individual that you will establish peace for us. You will take care of us for you have done all our works in us. You have always been there for us. You have always taken care of us and you will always take care of us. You will establish peace for us. As we seek to serve God, we need to recognize that God takes care of us. God gives us peace. And so you have a similar statement, but a slightly different statement from that which is made back in verse number three. But the recognition here is that no matter who's in charge and no matter who is over us, God will take care of us. The fourth one is found in verse number 15, where there Isaiah says, You have increased the nation, O Lord. You have increased the nation. You are glorified. You have expanded all the borders of the land. Who has the right to receive the glory for the things that are done? For the positives that take place, for, as it's described here, the increase of the nation, it is God. God is the one who is in control. God is the one who has the final say, as it were. God is the one who who gives the final seal of approval. And God is the one who will be the judge. You know, chapter 26 ends with the statement in verses 20 and 21, Come, my people, enter your chambers and shut your doors behind you. Hide yourself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation is past. For behold, the Lord comes out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth will also disclose her blood and will no more cover her slain. In other words, take refuge to the righteous, get ready and prepare Because the judgment is coming, the Lord will punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity, and he will take care of us. Some wonderful lessons to be found in Isaiah chapter 26. I hope that these will be things that will be beneficial to you. Tomorrow, we will pick up with a reading of chapter 27. Have a great day.